Hi and welcome back to Bob's Bits Fishing Vlog and this second video in my series on how to tie flies to catch coarse fish. In today's video we're going to look at the double red maggot. It's going to be another quite quick and, and fun one to tie. Let's jump right into it now. Welcome back, this is going to be a variation on the single red maggot fly that we tied up previously. So if you haven't watched that video, don't forget to take a look at that because the technique to tying this one is going to be very very similar. This is the single red maggot that we tied in the last video. So what I'm going to do is take this single red maggot um, and I'm going to clip off the hook point of this fly. And I'm doing that largely to avoid tangles when uh, we're casting the fly but it also helps no end when we're tying it up actually having tied these up with the barbs on the points on it makes it a little bit difficult it gets in the way be careful when you do this because obviously this is going to ping off all over the place try and put your hands around it and certainly make sure you've picked up any bits if you've got children or pets around in the house so that's the point cut off and that leaves us with our single maggot. These grub hooks, these Site A8 grub hooks that we've got here, will allow you to pass the, the shank of the hook through the eye of another one. So first thing I'm going to do, these have got barbs on, I'm going to take my pliers, you can use a pair of forceps for this as well, is to squeeze down that barb so we've got a barb, in effect a barbless hook. What we'll need to do now is pass the point of this hook through the eye of the single red maggot we've created in the, the earlier steps. And if you've done it correctly it should pass nicely over the, the body of the hook like that. That's our red maggot attached. What we want to do is maintain a bit of this movement at the top as well so make sure you start to tie in from a bit further back and leave some space with a bare hook near the eye. Same time processes with the single red maggot. I'll just start and catch my thread on you have to work around this single red maggot that you've got hanging off. That's it. And then we can start coming down. Touching turns to create a bit of a body. And as you can see, leaving the single red maggot hanging this side allows you to do your clockwise turns and it to fall back into place without anything getting tangled while you're tying up. And obviously as you get down to the bend, get a nice curve in it just like you would for a real maggot and then stop. So I'm going to work my way back with well spaced turns up to where I'm going to start to tie in the squirmy material now. This is what's left over from the squirmy that I had in the first video. There's probably more than enough to do this one. I could probably get another single out of that. Just pinch wrap that into place. So as we did with the single maggot, a little bit of tension there. Then work our way back down to the seat of the, the maggot, to its bum end. Now we've got our squirmy bedded in at the base of the hook, you need to work your tying thread back up to where you want to tie off at the head end. Just make sure that everything's out of the way there. So that's as far as we're going to go. Now we can start to tie the squirmy around. So first turn, obviously if you want to create that taper, you need to pull a little bit tighter. And then as you work up, so you trap it with your finger and let it relax. Trap it as you come over the top and let it relax, just like that. You don't want to put too much turn, uh, tension into it while you're working up to the top. Because what will happen is you'll lose some of that awesome squidginess that this squirming material gives you. Right, now we're going to lock this in place. Now we've got this work to the top. So, here we go, round the back with our tying thread. On a couple of turns like that just to make sure that it all gets locked. Pull that snug. I'm going to cut off our squirming material now and then we'll form a little bit of a head just there just to try and stop things from unwrapping. As you can see we've left it loose so this first maggot can, can move around. All that remains is to do our whip finish. So again I'm going to do two. Um, first obviously without the varnish and then a tiny bit on the second one. Give yourself plenty of t space around on your whip finish tool, make that triangle nice and big. That's three turns, and I'll give it another one for 
make sure that's nice and snug. And as I said, we're going to give it a tiny, tiny dot of varnish. Sometimes it'll actually perish the material, so you want as little varnish as possible. Not all squirming material is made equal, unfortunately. So uh, you're better to wear on the side of caution when it comes to applying a varnish. And there we go. That's our double red maggot. You can see we've got plenty of movement there. If you like what you've seen in today's video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. And don't forget to set your notifications by hitting the bell. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you again on another video posted by Bob's Bits Fishing Vlog. Bye for now.